from Sydney, Australia. So it's lovely to be with you. It's so awesome. We're so happy to have you here. Um, everyone, you're already active in the chat, which is wonderful. I do want to share that if you're comfortable 
sharing your comments in the chat with everyone, not just Anita, myself, and the team at Four Sigmatic. Be sure to toggle the little blue bar that says panelists. It says panelists for a lot of you right now. Click on that and bring it down to panelists and attendees. And that way, all of you can chat with each other and keep telling us where you're, where you're tuning in from. We love hearing that. All right, we have an amazing event in store for all of you. I have a few housekeeping notes before we get going. Um, if this is your first Elevate Everyday series, welcome. We do this every month. It's a live free platform where we share unique, quirky, unconventional ideas that work, hence our Zero Waste Masterclass today. And we bring experts across the wellness field to share their expertise. We have things like meditation to sustainability, holistic chefs, authors, and so many more. And tonight is a theme that's so near and dear to my heart. So I told Anita earlier, if no one has questions, I have a whole list, but bring them all. Um, Anita is such a wealth of knowledge in so many areas. And I do wanna let you all know that these are always recorded. So we'll upload these to YouTube afterwards and we'll send you all the recording tomorrow. So if you miss something or if you have to hop off or go pee or whatever it might be, don't worry, you'll get a copy of the recording. And as a thank you for tuning in, we always create a little discount code for you. I'll share this again at the end, but the code is rocket science, all one word. So you can use that on foursigmatic.com if you're in the States or Canada, or if you're international, that's active across all of our websites and you'll get 10% off your next order, even if you're a member. So if you're a member and you're part of our subscription, you'll get 10% off your next membership, which is pretty cool. A uh, quick disclaimer that I always have to share. Um, Anita is a doctor, right? She's an amazing ER doc and I'm an herbalist nutritionist, but neither of us are your healthcare practitioners. And so even though that's not necessarily the theme of our topic of our you know, webinar tonight, I do have to share that if you have personal health related questions or something comes up, see if you can ask it in a more general way that can benefit everyone here and that that way, Anita and I can really answer it um, fully. Okay, so keep going in the chat box. Uh, anything else, Anita, that everyone should have out and ready? Maybe a pen and paper? Yeah, so uh, just, just have an open mind, really. Um, get some pen and paper, write down tips and tricks that might be relevant for you, but I'm happy to get started when you are. Okay, well, for those of you that are new to um, Dr. Anita Van Dyke, I just want to share a quick introduction and then I'll hand off the mic. Um, so Dr. Anita Van Dyke is a qualified rocket scientist and medical doctor with a Bachelor of Engineering, Aeronautical Space and Doctor of Medicine, and most importantly, mother to Vivian. She was born in Guangzhou. Did I say that right? Guangzhou. Yeah. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Um, in China, raised in Australia, and currently splits her time between Sydney and San Francisco. Her second book, A Zero Waste Family in 30 Days, is now available at all good bookstores. Yes, there it is. <laughs> Anita writes about motherhood, zero waste living, and minimalism on Instagram at rocket underscore science or at anitavandyke.com. So without further ado, Welcome. We're so thrilled to be with you tonight, Anita. Hi, everyone. And mind my Australian accent. As I mentioned, I'm all the way in Sydney, Australia, talking to you live. I'm so excited to be here. But what I want to really want to ask, and to begin with, is I want to ask you, the audience, a question. And the first question is, are you wasting your life away? That's right. So you thought this speech was about just your, your trash and what kind of waste you're producing physically, but I really want you to reflect on the question, are you wasting your life away? Hmm. You see, when I started this journey, I wasn't living a truly zero waste life. And I never asked myself that question, are you wasting your life away? I didn't grow up with a hippie mom or a naturopath background or any sort of passion for the environment. I was just a person looking for happiness in all the usual places. That's very common for us in the Western world. And that is money, power, status. Mm. But 
all these stereotypical notions of success didn't provide me with the happiness that I expected. I was literally wasting my life away. So I want to begin this talk by going through the journey of how I started living a truly zero waste life. And then I'm going to go on to DIYs on how to make your life easier by living a zero waste life. And because this is a masterclass, I'm going to then throw it back to you for you to ask me questions about how I can improve your life and make your life in terms of, you know, zero wasting a bit simpler. So back to my journey. At the age of 26, I was a high flying corporate manager in a large engineering firm. I was earning more money than my migrant parents ever had. And I was a literal rocket scientist graduating with a Bachelor of Aeronautical Space Engineering. You know, sounds sexy even saying it, right? <laughs> so on paper, my life was the epitome of success. I had the latest Givenchy boots in the closet. I had a gorgeous husband. I had this great house in the suburbs. I was the one my parents didn't have to worry about. I was supposedly living the great Australian dream. And for you Americans out there, I'm sure you can relate. It's also the great American dream with the white picket fence and everything. But all this changed in an instant. And I remember having this almost existential crisis where I was sitting in a board meeting on level six, looking at my boss, my boss's boss and the big boss. And I had a surreal, almost out of body experience where I heard the question, is this it? Is this who I will become in the next 5, 10, 15 years time? And all the hopes I had of living a life that was truly mine, one that wasn't bound by golden handcuffs, was lost in that instant. Mm -hmm. I knew then if I kept going down this track, I would be a soulless human being. I would be a shell of the person who I was expecting myself to be. Wow. So these questions really haunted me and, um, and any kind of these existential crises that anyone goes through, you beca start becoming, you know, almost feeling symptoms of depression where, you know, you're feeling lethargic, you're feeling tired. And I think my husband looked at me and said, looked at me in the eyes and said, you have to quit your job. It's killing you. And I knew then I had to change my life. And if I didn't, I also risked losing him as well. So I quit my job the next day. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of person I am. Uh, it took balls, as they say, it took a lot of gumption, but I did it because I knew that my life wasn't truly mine. And since then, my life has totally transformed. By embracing a truly zero waste life, a life in which you don't waste your resources, time, and also the earth's resources, I actually began to peel back to what my life was really about, which is about being of service, being something that's greater than ourselves, being more than just about accumulating more stuff. So I went back to university to study full-time to become a medical doctor. I moved out of a four bedroom, huge house in the suburbs into a a 60 square foot apartment <laughs> and I dedicated my life to something bigger which is what I'm doing now a zero waste life you see working in corporate Australia didn't reflect who I was but that doesn't mean it's not right for you you certainly don't have to quit your day job to live a more eco-friendly life but you do have to find what works for you See, to me, living a zero waste life means more than just a plastic free diet. It has given me the freedom to live in alignment with my values and it has allowed me not to waste my life away. So after quitting my job, I had to learn to make ends meet on one income and that's when my zero waste journey began. I went back to the frugal lessons that my migrant parents taught me. Our parents, who lived in a generation where plastic isn't everywhere like it is now. I learned to buy what I needed, not waste my food, reuse items, and not live a disposable lifestyle with my disposable income. In stripping away the excess, I began to learn more about 
environmentalism, and I gained a newfound freedom to explore issues that truly matter, not just the latest Givenchy boots. <laughs> so during this time, I attended a talk with Dr. Sylvia Earle at the Sydney Opera House. She is the original female aquanaut and has explored the depths of our oceans for over the past 40 years. And she has truly seen the change in our ocean life. And she shocked me with images of how plastic pollution has invaded every level of our oceans. In fact, by 2050, there'll be more plastic in the sea than fish. I'm gonna repeat that. By 2050, which is less than 30 years from now, there'll be more plastic in the sea than fish. You see, plastic takes hundreds of years to break down. In fact, every single piece of plastic that has ever been made is still on the planet in some form. Think about that. Now, the talk is called a zero waste masterclass, but I don't want you to be daunted by the word zero itself. Zero is just a goal. There's no need to feel scared by it. Quite simply, zero waste living is about leaving a gentler footprint on the planet. And that's it. And that's why I want to introduce you to a new kind of environmentalism. It's called the everyday activist. And the everyday activist looks like you and me. And that's about valuing small but consistent actions that over the cumulative time frame of your life and also the ripple effect of those around you can make a big compound difference in the future. See, the key to living a sustainable life is that it has to be sustainable for you. So I'm going to repeat that. Hmm. The key to living a sustainable life is that it has to be sustainable for you. And that's why I created in my book, A Zero Waste Life in 30 Days, I've created the three steps to zero waste method. So that allows you to chop and change at different points in your life and different stages of your life. So the first step is firstly to reduce your waste. And that means using up what you already have before you go out and buying something new, even if it is made of plastic, because that is the most sustainable option, using what you already have. The second option is what I call the low waste option. The low waste option allows you to use paper, stainless steel or glass options. These three options are much more sustainable than plastic because they allow you to be recycled. Okay, so these materials can be recycled infinitely without degradation to the material quality. Whereas plastic is downcycled. So what that means is the highest form of quality plastic is downcycled to the next lowest form and then it's downcycled again until it sits in landfill because it can't be downcycled any further, right? And here is a reminder itself. Plastic is made of a non-renewable resource, all right? It's made of petroleum. I think a lot of people forget that it is made from petroleum itself. So it's not a sustainable material to begin with and it's not a sustainable material as you go through the life cycle. So that's why the second step is the low waste option, choosing other materials that may be available to you. Now, the third step is the zero waste option. And that is the ultimate goal to living a plastic free or zero waste life. And that means making your own products, choosing products that are naked or package free. And I'll go into these three options as I go along this talk. The most important thing is these three stages is a great way for you to mix and match and ease into the zero waste lifestyle so that you can find it a flexible lifestyle that is suitable for you. Remember, sustainability has to be sustainable for you. Okay, so the first section I wanna talk about to reduce your waste, and it's the easiest step, is let's talk about food, right? So reducing food waste is as easy as understanding the ins and the outs of your home. So let's go through the three steps to zero waste method. First step, reduce your waste. So after this talk tonight, I want you to go home and do a trash bin audit. So look at your trash itself, put on your reusable gloves and go through your trash. 
Understand what are the frequent flyers in your home. Understand what's going in and out of your home. So go through your, your trash bin and sort out things that could be recycled. Go through your trash bin and sort out things that you don't know if they can be recycled and do the research on it. And then you can look at um, zero waste methods to then reduce your waste then. So doing that trash bin audit is the first step to reducing your waste. So I would advise you to do that tonight. Now, the low waste option is then get composting, okay? So if you're not composting now, yes, start doing it. In fact, the easiest solution is to actually not even own your own compost bin. So as I mentioned before, originally when I started my zero waste journey, I lived in a 60 square foot apartment. I didn't have room for a compost bin. So here's an easy life hack. All you have to do is freeze your compost in your freezer and take it to your local community gardens or your neighborhood compost bins once a week. You can go to a website called sharewaste.com and look at local neighborhood community gardens or other kind of uh, locations or neighbors who are willing to share their compost bins with you. Okay, so that's a great, no mess, no upkeep whatsoever. That's really easy. But if you want to create your own composting solution, there are so many methods out there. So it's as simple as buying your own compost bin from your local neighborhood, um, you know, uh, plant center or, uh, you know, your local hardware center. You can also do a worm farm, which is very easy and approachable. So that's something you can research on. There's also a thing called a bokashi bin, which is a fermentation bin, which is about this size. And you can buy that online. And that allows you to ferment your waste, including meat products, bones, and things like that. And it ferments into a compost juice, which you can dilute and then put into your garden. And it's as simple as that. There's so many options out there. That last one is amazing. I've never yeah. heard of that. Yeah, Bokashi bin. Just Google it. Have a look. It's called a fermentation bin. I had been, I had two in my apartment that had been using for years. And it's a great solution for those people who are living in small spaces. That's amazing. Now, the final option, which is the third step, is the zero waste option. And this means preventing the ins. So the understanding the ins and the outs, right? So we've talked about the outs. Now we talk about the ins. Okay, so the easiest way to prevent plastic packaging from coming into your home is by shopping the outer aisles of the supermarket mm. or go to your local farmer's market or have it delivered in your local, uh, what we call organic delivery boxes. Okay, so the great thing is Mother Nature has created her own packaging for most of the healthy foods that you need in your life. Okay, so incidentally, by taking part in this package free diet, this plastic free diet, you're also taking part in the zero waste diet. And that means you kind of feel healthier by default. So like I said, the outer aisles of the supermarket is where all the package free mother nature's goods are. So your vegetables, your, your fruit and vegetables out from the outside, shop from the outside before you go into the inside aisles of your supermarket where all the packaged goods are. You can also go to your local farmer's markets and bring your own bags, bring your own produce bags. If you forget your own bags, ask for a cardboard box. Do whatever you can to think outside the plastic bags that you are given, right? If you eat meat, one thing I also suggest is also to bring your own containers to your butchers or your deli or your meat supermarket. And don't be afraid to spark up a conversation. I know we live in a COVID, um, you know, COVID scared world, but let's be honest, you bring your own clean containers where there's minimal contact between what's, you know, already been touched is actually a safer option than actually a lot of manhandling with lots of different types of packaging that you don't know who has gone through and touched it. So actually, it's a great way to spark up a conversation with the store owner whilst you're doing this kind of plastic free life. Okay. 
And finally, of course, you can shop, shop at bulk stores. So these are package free stores which have a Google about where it is local to your area. And a life hack here is these bulk stores have bulk foods which have long shelf lives. So you don't need to go to the store every week or every two weeks. You can actually, you know, uh, schedule in your journey to go once a month which is what I do. So you write down a list of all your bulk goods that you need to go and just shop there once a month because they have such a long shelf life. And by bringing your own containers to these stores, there's no waste whatsoever. All you have to do is make sure you tar the container. Tar being making the weight of the container zero so that you don't include it into your, you, you know, your purchases. And that's a simple way. And you can ask that in your local bulk store on how to do that. So those are the simple ways in the three steps to zero waste method about food. Now, the next topic I wanna to talk about is something that's not perishable and it's quite controversial. And I want you to talk about your stuff. And mm. this is what I'm talking about. Everything in your home that is non-perishable. Stuff. Over the past six years, I've gotten rid of 70% of my stuff. Wow. And it has literally and metaphorically taken a load off on how I feel. I have saved so much time, money and stress by literally removing the clutter from my life. And so I want to talk about this stuff in your life and going through the three steps to zero waste method to do so. So the first step is to reduce your clutter. So after you do your bin audit tonight and look at it around your home, I want you to put yourself on a spending ban. Yes, a spending ban. I do this once a year for a month at a time. So it might be no spend July or no spend September, no spend whatever. It could be even just for a week or even just a day, whatever it may be. You set the rules you set the time frame. But by stopping your shopping, you can see where your money is going and start controlling your external environment. Because mm -hmm. let us not forget our external environment is a reflection of our internal environment, right? So that's the first step. The second step is the low waste option. And that means start decluttering your home. And this may take some time and patience, but responsibly removing items from your home that you don't need or love allows you to actually cl cleanse the environment in which you live in to live in alignment with your values. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk about how we can declutter responsibly. There's lots of, you know, Marie Kondo's out there and lots of like hashtag declutter, hashtag whatever out there. And it's so important to talk about the end journey, not just the journey of decluttering itself, right? So we can't just send everything to Goodwill or we can't just send everything to your local thrift store. You've got to think outside the thrift store box because only 10 to 20% of the items that we send to those local thrift stores actually get resold. A lot of it gets sent to either A, third world countries for other people to deal with, which is atrocious to think that us in the first world are sending our rubbish to the third world country for someone else to deal with. Or secondly, it just sent, gets sent directly to landfill. The first thing I would do for your old linen, so your old um, bed towels or uh, sheets or things like that, is taking it to your local animal shelter. Most of them are more than happy to take your own soft bedding because they need it for the dogs and um, cats who live in those shelters. So do that first. Another option, instead of donating your clothes or your um, home products, is, and especially your beauty products, is donating it to your local women's shelter or women's refuge. They will take those products, especially if they're clean and full, to, instead of you disposing it to landfill. Another option is taking your old magazines and books to your local um, schools or also your local hospitals or local doctor's waiting rooms. Because a lot of those places would welcome reading materials that are relatively new and in good condition. 
Another option is buy nothing websites or Facebook marketplace. Send those items out into the world for free for people to collect and come so you don't actually have to do any work uh, or hold a garage sale or hold, um, you know, a, 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 a store in your home where you can sell those things. All those options are viable before you send those things to the thrift store or, God forbid, send it to landfill itself. And finally, I want to talk about the zero waste option for stuff. I want you to, before you buy anything new, after you go on this spending ban, to go and ask yourself these questions called the hierarchy of buying. So first question I want you to ask is, can I make do with something I already have, right? A lot of our Western mentality is that we need to consume to solve a problem. That is what something I want you to reflect on. Can I solve this problem by A, not spending any money or B, using something I already have? I would say 70% of the time it can be done. The second question I want you to ask is, can I borrow this item? We live in a world where we're very individualistic, that we at a click of, of a button on Amazon, we can so solve this problem by buying something. But by building a community around you, by asking your friends, your neighbours, or even your social media community, can I borrow this item? It allows you to stop buying. The third question is then, can I buy it secondhand? The secondhand economy or the circular economy is something I want you all to start embracing. You save money, you save resources, and you're preventing any packaging as well because a lot of this stuff you can actually pick up and hand deliver yourself. And the fourth question is, if you do find that you need to buy something new, is can I buy it from a responsible product maker that aligns with my values? So let's talk about where your product's made. How is it made? Is it made with fair wages? Is it detrimental to the environment? Ask these questions and consider yourself a responsible buyer, a responsible and conscious consumer before you buy a new product. I have to be honest with you. I haven't bought anything new in the past six years except for underwear, socks and swimwear and that's it. Wow. Everything is available in the secondhand economy, right? And so if I can do it, living the busy life of being a doctor, a mother, you can do it too. In fact, if you follow me on Instagram, rocket underscore science, I've just moved into a new home in Bondi Beach, Australia, and everything, everything in my home has been furnished secondhand. So make secondhand your first choice. Now, the third area I want to tackle before we go on to our uh, zero waste uh, masterclass is the issue of time. Mm. Okay, so I want you to do a bit of an activity. I want you to quickly calculate your hourly wage. This is how much your time is worth in an economic sense. After taxes, after commuting, even minus the cost of, you know, things such as uniforms or clothing for work. How much is your time actually worth in an economical sense? All right. Give you a few seconds to do that. All right. Yeah. Now, most of us, I have to be honest, think that our hourly wage is actually higher than it actually is. Once you minus the taxes, once you minus the commute, once you minus also the child rearing, okay, the cleaning that you might be outsourcing, whatever it may be, it's actually not that much. Now I want you to calculate all your unpaid hours. So that could be watching TV, surfing the internet, scrolling on Instagram, cooking, cleaning, things like that, right? And some of these unpaid hours are crucial to living a normal, healthy life. But I want you to also reflect on this. In reality, too many of us spend these lost hours, unpaid hours, mindlessly consuming. We are literally wasting our lives away. So I want you to do a rough guess of how many hours a week you spend passively consuming. So rather than actively creating. So these activities include browsing shops, 
mindlessly looking at cat videos on the internet, watching hours <laughs> of reality television. You know, a lot of us do that. Most people, an average American spends three to six hours watching television to relax after a busy day at work. Three to six hours a day, okay? So if you do the math, let's just even err on the side of just say three hours, right? Three times five and maybe on the weekend a bit more, that's over 24 hours of mindlessly, passively consuming rather than actively creating. That's a whole day lost a week where we're just being mindless consumers. Now I want you to think of all the goals you've never accomplished because you've said, I don't have time for that. You know, thinking about further study, learning how to sew, cooking a decent meal for yourself, exercising, learning about environmental issues. I always thought, I don't have time for that. Now imagine if you replace those passive hours with active hours, ones in which you're doing, creating, making, learning, rather than passively consuming. You see, as Beyonce says, we all have 24 hours in a day, okay? If you try saying you don't have time for these goals, it's just a matter of saying you are not making them a priority. See how that feels. It's not that you don't have the time, you are just not making it a priority, right? And these lost hours can be used for so much more than just hobbies, you know. In fact, we can use time to dedicate to ourselves, our family and the wider world around us. So I challenge you to make it a priority. Instead of losing those lost hours to more television, more shopping, more emptiness, I challenge you to fill it with something more nourishing, more fulfilling, something more worthwhile of your precious time. You see, plastic is mother nature's non-renewable resource and time is ours. So let's not waste either one. Okay. So I hope I've shown you that living a zero waste life is about making new habits and sensible switches, which I'll go on to more in a second. I want to show you that being an everyday activist means that we can all be better caretakers for the only planet that we can live on. We need to lower our environmental footprint, not for altruistic reasons, not for political reasons, because Earth is the only home we've got. There is no planet B. And I'm saying this as an aerospace engineer, Mars is too far away, it's uninhabitable. We've only got planet Earth. I wanna show you that living a zero waste is not about sacrifice or deprivation. It's about saying no to waste, but yes to life. In fact, by living a truly zero waste life, I've gained more, more time, more money, and most importantly, more life. And isn't that what we all want in the end? A life of happiness, a life of luxury, a life that isn't wasted. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. Now, so powerful. now I want to go on. Thank you so much. I, I really want to go on now to some DIY topics. And um, so I want to break it up into three sections. Firstly, I want to do a beauty portion. And then I want to talk about home cleaning. And then I want to call it the last section out and about. So things that you can do to reduce your waste when you're out and about. So the first thing is one of my favorite beauty hacks of all time is creating a DIY coffee scrub from Four Sigmatic Coffee and using the coffee grounds that you normally would compost or God forbid, send to landfill. And this is what it looks like. So this coffee scrub, I wish we had smell vision <laughs> smells delicious, okay? And it's such a simple recipe. So if you have a pen and paper, write this down. Use your old coffee grounds at the end of the day. And if you don't drink coffee, you can even go to your local cafe and ask for free coffee grounds. It's a free product that they dispose of. You can add in 
a cup of coffee grounds, and then you add in a third of a cup of olive oil, and then melt in about one to two teaspoons of um, coconut oil. Mix it in all together, and it makes a beautiful body scrub, which you can pour into upcycle jars such as this. This is a really lovely gift idea, especially for Mother's Day or a housewarming gift, which you can fill up to the top, put a ribbon on and give it away as a lovely gift. And the reason why I want to recommend coffee grounds instead of using the store-bought supermarket kind of beauty scrubs that you buy is a thing called micro beads. So micro beads in the store-bought supermarket kind of body scrubs is actually tiny, tiny balls of plastic, which go down our drain into our sea life. Our sea life then eats it and then it bioaccumulates up the food chain. So plastic never goes away. So the small fish eat the big fish and the big fish eat the big fish and we eat the big fish and it ends up back in us. So by doing an alternative like this, where it's 100% natural and it prevents waste from going, into our, into our drains. It allows us to not only look good, but also do something good for the environment and also prevents your coffee grounds from being wasted at all. So this is a really simple recipe that everyone should adopt. If you're worried about oils in the drain, um, just you know, pour hot water down the drain itself or it, uh, a mixture of white vinegar and water and it's a really good um, degreaser for the drain. So there's no issues with that. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is home cleaning. So when you do your bin audit, so your trash bin audit, I also want you to go home and have a look at all the things underneath your sink. So go get out all the products. I'm sure you might have a floor cleaner, a window cleaner, a wood cleaner, a furniture cleaner. On average, an average American has about 10 to 20 household cleaning products underneath their sink. And I wanna tell you a personal story. I used to have really bad eczema on my hands and I used to think, what's going on? It was turned out to be from my cleaning products because wow. let's be honest, even in a COVID world, a lot of those cleaning products clean 99.9999% of the germs in our house, which is actually not beneficial for our skin and the natural bacteria and the natural micro, uh, microbacteria that we need to have in our system, right? We don't, unless you're in a hospital or a nursing home, you don't need to clean 99.999% of the bacteria. Sure, we need to be sensible, and good old soap actually does the trick, okay? So I want you to replace all those products in your cleaning, um, in your, in your, in your um, underneath your sink and mm -hmm. replace it with a simple product, which is Castile soap. Castile mm -hmm. soap is a, a natural kind of vegetable soap, which you can find in most bulk stores, which you can refill. This is a container I've refilled for years and years. And it is something that allows you to make different products suitable for your home. Because it is a soap-based product, um, it allows you to dilute the product to make it so that you can do different things. So for a hand wash, you can dilute it one to seven. So one ounce of Castile soap, so one, uh, one portion of one part Castile soap, and then the rest will be water. You can also make a DIY cleaner with this. So you can use it for, the uh, if you want a strong cleaner, dilute it one to seven. If you want to make a body soap for this, you can do the same thing. There's literally hundreds of uses for this Castile soap. Another DIY cleaner I want to talk about is something that you can refill and do in your own home. And that is just simply using white vinegar, put in some old citrus rind, so lemon, or orange rinds, let that soak for about three to four days and then refill in a glass bottle spray like so. And you can use it as a DIY cleaner for most, most surfaces in your home, right? And this is a product that our grandmothers, our great grandmothers would have made. And it's so simple and it reduces the amount of, you know, toxins in your home, but also actually does the trick, which is a natural degreasing agent and natural cleaning agent. So between those two products and then a bicarb soda, so bicarbonate soda, 
which is something you can make a paste out of bicarbonate soda you can add some castile soap and maybe some coconut oil that acts as a natural abrasive um, uh, mechanical agent for most of your tough to remove stains as well so between those three products bicarbonate soda castile soap and white vinegar that's all i use for cleaning simple as that (laughs) exactly exactly that's all you need and then now the final thing i want to talk about is what I call an out and about life hack. And that is creating yourself a zero waste kit, okay? So a zero waste kit you can put in a straw bag like this and you can transfer it from your backpack to your handbag easily or you can even just pop it in your car, okay? So there's no excuse. My zero waste kit consists of the four most common things found in beachside cleanups. So firstly, that is coffee cups okay if you're getting your coffee in a disposable coffee cup consider a reusable coffee cup okay and you can use a collapsible option or you can use a glass option or you can just do what i do just bring your own mug to your local cafe okay it's as simple as that you can say pour the coffee straight in so it's covid safe You don't actually have any manual handling between any of this. And it's a simple life hack of just using what you already have without spending any money on it. Now, the second option, uh, second thing that most speech I clean ups find is plastic bags. Now, let's do the math for this. If you're buying your banana, which already has a skin outside, and then you're buying up and then you're putting in a plastic bag and then you're taking it to the car, you're only using that plastic bag for maybe three minutes, right? However, that plastic bag stays on our planet for hundreds of years, okay? So if you're still using plastic bags, I say avoid it as much as possible. Or what I do is I have a foldable tote bag. So this foldable tote bag, yeah, it's a really handy option. So it fits in your bag as as easily as possible and it folds up to next to nothing and you have a reusable tote bag. So it's just, you know, you put your grocery shopping in and you're out and easy and ready to go. It's such an easy option. You can use a cotton bag. You can use, you can sew your own bags from, um, you know, scraps of materials you have at home. There's so many secondhand bag options out there. Or like I said before, if God forbid you forget your bag, use your hands. Most of the time we can use your hands. I've tried everything. I've taken off my jacket. I've done everything to avoid a plastic bag or ask for a cardboard box, which you can then recycle or reuse, okay? The second thing that's found in beachside cleanups that's really common is disposable um, plastic drink bottles. So those single use drink bottles, and I don't even have a plastic bottle to show you because all I use is my cup or a reusable thermos. And that's a really good option as well because it keeps your drinks hot and cold. But avoid plastic bottles as much as possible because they take hundreds of years to um, break down. Yeah. I also have a spork, which is a a fork, knife and spoon in one. You can get these from camping stores um, or most camping stores as well. This is made of reusable plastic, uh, recyclable plastic, sorry. Um, they re- upcycled old plastic bottles to make this and it's, I got it in Sweden and it's so handy. So you can avoid single use cutlery. I also have in my zero waste kit, a cloth napkin. So cloth napkin, you can use it to put your pastries in, put your bread in. You can use it to wipe noses and mouths and blow your nose or whatever. It's a great tool for everything. So I always have one in there. And the final thing is, the most common thing found in beach cyclamps is actually plastic straws. Now, there's a simple alternative to plastic straws. And it's something that Mother Nature has created for us. And it's called your mouth. Just use your mouth. You don't need a plastic straw for most of the circumstances, right? You can drink down your smoothie. You can drink down your cocktail. You can drink down whatever you have. However, if you don't want to ruin your lipstick or if you have young children, an alternative is just to get yourself a reusable stainless steel straw, okay? No need for plastic when you can do that. 
So as I mentioned before, all this can easily be put in a reusable cotton bag like so, and you can transfer it from one bag to another, and that's your zero waste kit. And you can adapt it to, to suit your lifestyle and use what you want, okay? All right, so those are my three kind of main areas and hacks. The last 15 minutes, I'm gonna put it out to you so that I can help you with any questions that you may have. Amazing, thank you so much, Anita. There's such simple, small ways for all of us get, to get started. And I just wanna reiterate to everyone, meet yourself where you're at. I say that all the time from an herbal perspective and nutrition perspective. And really, if we could do one thing like a trash audit, how powerful to just start becoming aware and bringing our attention and our consciousness and becoming more mindful of what we're consuming. And yeah, we'll open it up um, to any questions from all of you. I know there was a few earlier on, but you can, you can feel free to ask them now. And I love the compost. I got so excited. Compost is my background, industrial composting. And so if all of you are interested in a compost class, we'll have to do a straight like reuse compost and, and kitchen waste type class. Um, and there's so many other smaller things that we can get into as well um, about, yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Lots of questions coming in. Okay. Okay. So um First question, Anne is wondering what about what you use for shampoo or if you have any okay. tips or tricks for shampoo? Yeah, so there's great alternatives. If you live near a bulk store, you can get, bring your own containers and refill bulk in terms of shampoo and conditioner. That's a simple option. Another option is shampoo bars. So mm -hmm. there's so many lovely products out there, um, so many brands, it's endless really. You can find a type for your hair type and just Google shampoo bars. And a lot of them come package free or come in a recyclable paper or cardboard container. So that's a simple option there. Awesome, great hacks. Um, earlier you were talking about storing your food waste in the freezer and the question is, what do you keep those items in? So what's the, the best method to keep them in the freezer? Yeah, so I just put them in a, um, a container that you have lying around, any container, a plastic container or a glass jar. And just make sure you don't fill it to the top so it doesn't crack in terms of when you freeze it. And that's all I do. I just put it in a container and then I take it to the local compost once a week. Love it. And one of my favorite hacks is if you have a lot of food scraps that are savory. So garlic peels, onion peels, carrots, uh, you know, the top of peppers, whatever it might be. I put those in a separate bag and then I use that as the base for a veggie broth. Um, yes. Yes. That's a great hack too. I do that too. Yeah, tops of veggies. Yeah. Savory things. Like you say, make great soup bases. So don't just neglect them. You can yeah. use them as a soup base and then you can compost it afterwards as well. Yeah. And on, I think it was on your social, Anita, I was looking earlier and there was a bin that you put in your refrigerator too. Yes. So even before the food. Yes. Gets I will tell you, yeah, I'll tell you about this life hack. That was a real game changer for me. Yes. Put in the top shelf of your fridge, a box labeled eat me first, please. Uh -huh. And this is a box for everyone in your, whether it be housemates or family members can put in their lonely banana or half even eaten avocado, whatever it may be. So that everyone knows to eat those items first before you throw them away or they, you know, get sent to landfill or even before they're composted. It allows you to reduce your waste and it also saves money too. I love that. I just saw that earlier today. I'm like, how have I never done that? So I'm starting that. I'm starting that this weekend. Eat first, Ben. Yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, hi, I have cats. So this is from Chapin. I have cats and I use plastic bags to clean out the litter boxes. Any suggestions for any other options? Yeah, so there's great options out there. You can use biodegradable plastic bags made out of cornstarch, we can, which can be home composted. So look at those options for cats and dogs. I love that. Oh, this next question, Amy, I can relate to this so much. Amy says, I travel a lot for work and always bring a stainless steel bottle and a straw on airplanes. Um, prior to the last year and a half, only about 50% of flight attendants were open to pouring water into the stainless steel bottle. And others said that they could not because of sanitary reasons. 
Do you have any advice for zero waste while traveling and drinking yeah. water in other countries because it's so hard to avoid plastic bottles? Absolutely. When I went to Mexico, I remember because unlike in Australia, we can drink water out of the tap and it's clean and safe and sanitary. So when traveling, what I use is a product called Love Lark, L-A-R-Q. And it is a bottle that uses UV radiation to clean out, to destroy 99.9% .9 of, you know, toxic bugs. And it uses UV radiation, which can you can charge with a USB. And it's a stainless steel um, thermos drinking bottle, which lasts for years. It is a, uh, a pricey investment, I have to say, but it is worthwhile in the long run because you can use it for literally decades and it allows you to travel safely and drink water safely from any any resource. Yeah, that's a great idea. I love my Lark bottle. I also, when I was living in India, would use a copper bottle before Lark came out. And it's definitely not as high tech or doesn't have the same sanitary standards as the Lark, but copper was the original form of sanitizing water. So you leave your water in a copper bottle overnight and it's better than, uh, uh, you know, any other, any other material that you're putting it in. So I don't yeah, know how you absolutely. feel about copper as a doctor. <laughs> um, I think as a Western doctor, I don't think that we talk about copper that much, but I think in the, in the, in the Eastern traditional sense, I think there's lots of information about how drinking out of copper is very good for you. Another yeah. option I yeah. would say is a carbon filter. You can get these black carbon kind of you know, rods that you can buy and they're a really good zero waste alternative to help naturally filter your water as well. I love that. Like the Berkey water filter. Yeah, filter. exactly. Exactly. Okay. Leilani, already so proud of you. Le Leilani saying, I've been zero waste for years. I still find frustration. Tortilla wrappers are in plastic bags, chip bags. Um, she's asking if you know about TerraCycle. Uh, yeah. In New Jersey. She said, I heard. Yeah, TerraCycle is actually international. So there's local branches to wherever you are. There's TerraCycle in Australia and there's TerraCycle US. Um, in Australia and also in America, because when I lived in San Francisco, I did this. We, I always say avoid soft plastic as much as possible, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of those tortilla chips and stuff, well, you know, let's all live our lives. If you want a tortilla chips every now and then, but let's, let's, let's just say that's the reality of life. Anything that's scrunchable plastic, so anything that you can scrunch in your palm, that's a soft plastic. You can actually take to your local, um, you can take to your Walmart, Whole Foods, and major supermarkets to be recycled again. So they take them in bulk. It's at the, if there's a bin in front of these major supermarkets, just do a Google search of where it's available to you. I stock them up in a big soft plastic bag. And then when it gets too full, I take it to those supermarkets to be recycled so that's a really mm -hmm. simple option and also places the owners back onto the products uh, so you know the big major supermarkets for them to deal with the rubbish that they're providing you that's such a brilliant idea thank you uh edward is wondering if you can speak a bit more on second hand uh the question is is buying from thrift stores considered second hand or not Yes, it is. So thrift store, my favorite ones are the ones that are the local benefits, local charities. So your local council foundation or your RSPCAs, so your dog and cat charities and things like that. Um, things that actually benefit local charities are actually my favorite type of thrift stores rather than the more commercial ones that, you know, actually make profit. However, being part of the circular economy is as simple as you know, visiting your local markets. It doesn't have to be a strip store. You can visit your local market on the weekend. You can buy from Facebook Marketplace or other kind of sites such as that. You can do free cycle websites as well. So get things for free. But actually being part of the secondhand economy means not buying anything new. So any, any chance you can get to avoid buying something new means that you're not using virgin resources to produce a product that's probably already out there right? Especially for things that are very um, seasonal. So one thing I like to do is Halloween, right? Christmas, things like that. I like to get all my decorations, all those kind of um, wrapping paper, even avoid wrapping paper, but at least cloth and materials, which you can wrap things in. Um, 
from your local thrift store because those seasonal products, they occur every year. So, you know, Christmas comes around every year. And I think for us, uh, if there's a mentality or stigma around secondhand, let's break it. So if you go onto um, my Instagram or website, I want to show you that secondhand can be sexy. And that means you can buy designer price, uh, designer pieces for reduced costs. You can buy luxury pieces at a much reduced square cost. Recently, my ultimate bargain was actually finding a sideboard from West Elm, which is an American brand and very expensive. I'm sure it is in America too. Marble top with a beautiful wooden finish for a quarter of the price that it originally retailed for, for from make Facebook Marketplace. And they delivered it to me. So it's win-win. So like I said, anything can be considered secondhand in terms of where you buy it. I, I think the best way is just to dab your toe in there is firstly, you can even try eBay or Depop for fashion. And then if you want to go out and for the thrill of the hunt, which is what I like to do, check out your local charity shop or your local thrift store and have, have, a, have a fun day out of it. Sounds awesome. Yes. Thank you. And you recently posted that picture of your bedroom, which was yes. you're like, I got everything secondhand. It is the most beautiful, <laughs> bright, white, clean bedroom. So everyone go check out Anita's social and so much inspiration there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. George is wondering, what are your thoughts on compostable produce, de- produce bags? Is compostable bioplastic truly biodegradable? Yeah, so you have to do your research on those and you have to be very wary of greenwashing and the terms used associated with greenwashing. My favorite greenwashing term is that it's natural, right? All products are natural because it's made from natural products, even from you know non-renewable resources, it's still a natural product. So you have to be wary. The second thing is you have to read the label. Is it home compostable? If it's home compostable, it literally Mm. means you can put it in your compost at home. If it's biodegradable, that's a kind of iffy term. How long does it take to biodegrade? Because plastic eventually biodegrades, but it takes hundreds of years to biodegrade, if not thousands, because we don't even know because we've we've all not lived within the lifetime of actually seeing it biodegrade. So we just got to be careful with that terminology and do your research about those things. Yep. Great tip. Thank you. Yeah. And if you have a metal compost bin at home on your counter, there's really no need for a bag. I clean it with that baking soda and vinegar about once a week. And yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's just as cleanly. Exactly. And yeah, there's so many great alternatives. I like to also line my bin with newspaper. So then I just wrap up the newspaper and then it can go, you know, if you do have a small amount of waste, which Event, I have such a small bin that I only clear it out probably once a year. And so yeah. whatever I'm, um, and I find that because when you start composting, all your wet waste is taken care of. The mm-hmm. things that are left in your actual trash bin is actually dry waste. So you probably don't even need a bin liner. You can just use newspaper or just go naked. Amazing. Oh, we could keep you here all night. You're, yeah. you just off of a night shift in the ER everyone. So you're just like full power. <laughs> You are creating so much space. We're so grateful. Yeah, there's so much gratitude and love in the in the chat right now. But I do want to let you all go. And where can everyone, of course, they can find you at social on Instagram, rocket underscore science, your website, anitavandyke.com. Um, where can they buy your book? Um, yeah, you can buy it anywhere, any good bookstore, but just have a Google. I think it's available on Amazon and available Kindle. My first book, A Zero Waste Life, is a great one for beginners. And for those who want to, and this one is a great new one for a zero waste family, but it's for families of from two to 25. So there's still new tips and tricks for everyone out there. Amazing. Well, thank you again so, so much. And thank you all for your time and for being here. Uh, Again, the little discount that we made you all for being here is rocket science, all one word. You can use that at forcingmatic.com and uh, purchase some of your next forcingmatic products in bulk. Get your bulk bag of ground coffee, make your body scrub. Make your body scrub, yeah. (laughs) Let us know how it turns out. I was thinking when you said that too, even the beyond the kind of trail of the plastic who wants to rub plastic on our bodies too exactly, right? exactly. So, so such a simple hack you gave us so much information and tips and yeah from myself and everyone here uh, we're just so grateful and we'll be in touch 
So thank so. you for having me. Thanks, Anita. Take care. Thank okay, you, everyone. Bye.